Brooklyn Independent Television. New York City now has close to 70 business improvement districts, and more than 20 of these bids are here in Brooklyn. One of them, created in the fall of 2009, is the bed Gateway bid, which runs about a mile and a half on Fulton Street and includes more than 300 businesses. What does a bid like this mean to an area like Central Brooklyn? And just how well is the bid doing as a two and a half year old? Here with some of the answers is Doug Jones, Gateway's Executive Director. Doug, welcome. Thanks, Randy. Thanks so much for having us. So, Doug, let's start by talking a little bit about what a bid does and also sort of defining the boundaries of the Gateway bid. Absolutely. Um, the bed Gateway Business Improvement District, um, in, it's on Fulton Street in central Brooklyn. It goes from Lewis Avenue as its eastern border all the way down to Claussen Avenue as its western border, which is actually the border between bed and Clinton Hill. And then it's also on Nostrum Avenue from Atlantic Avenue in the south, and it goes uh, to Halsey Street in the north. The services that a bid typically provides, um, supplemental sanitation, um, Department of Sanitation always cleans up and picks up and, and everything else, and businesses within the district need to have their proper certification, but it provides supplemental sanitation, you know, guys on the street cleaning up and sweeping up and things like that, um, marketing services, and then also some component of security. Um, and the, the security, it's never, you know, the kind of armed guard type security. It's more of monitoring quality of life issues. If you have businesses who are dumping or people coming from other areas to dump inside of the district, um, people, you know, noise complaints, things, like, things of that nature. So that's what the Business Improvement District does. So what's new and exciting at the Gateway Bid? What isn't new and exciting in, uh, in, in Bed-Stuy? I mean, there's, there's so much happening. First of all, I mean, you, you said it. You know, uh, Central Brooklyn, Bedford Stuyvesant is experiencing, you know, so much of a renaissance right now. How does a commercial corridor shape itself in the 21st century to really service the needs of people that are living in the community abutting that district? Um, it's different from a downtown center, it is a neighborhood center. Um, and we'd like to attract the folks that are living in Brownstone, Bedford Stuyvesant to Fulton Street. So there are a couple of things that we're doing. We're constantly outreaching uh, to the residential community through our seminars and our workshops to invite them to participate and see what's new and what's happening, what new businesses are here, um, what services they're offering, what products they're offering. Um, we do that through networking seminars. We're having a few um, workshop seminars coming up to support local businesses. Um, how do we get the business community itself to think about using social media, you know, Twitter and YouTube and Facebook to offer incentives for people to come, to get people to come through the doors and really take advantage of seeing what's on the walls. There, there are wonderful things, you know, that are happening on Fulton Street. Uh, Roses Hardware, for instance, um, those guys pride themselves on having a customer service and intimacy of the people that are walking through their, their, their doors bar none. So they, they say, and rightfully so, that they can compete with, you know, the Home Depot because they know what their customer needs coming in. Um, so those, those are the kinds of things that we're doing, like really building, helping businesses to build capacity and interact with the residents in the surrounding community. So I've had the pleasure of working with you in the past, mm -hmm. um, and I remember when you and I were both at the Brooklyn Chamber, you know, Fulton Street was your passion back then. Yes. And, um, and now it's, it's, it's come full circle and you're, you're doing great things. One of the concerns that, that you used to echo all the time was just the, the retail mix mm -hmm. and, and how to diversify that retail mix. Yeah. So what, what are you doing today in order to, to make that happen? You know what we do? We strap on a good shoe and we tie up our laces and we go see what's happening in other districts, what's working there, and we speak to businesses that are interested in expanding. Um, we visit our friends over at MARP, we visit our friends uptown on 125th Street, um, we talk to our colleagues in those districts and say, hey, listen, point me in the direction of businesses who are thinking about expanding and see if we can attract them to Bed-Stuy. And we do a lot in terms of tours. You know, there are entrepreneurs there that understand what's happening in central Brooklyn and understand that their market there is similar to our market here. 
um, and hey, come walk around. You know, look at the fabulous architecture. Look at some of the openings that we have. You know, come feel the neighborhood, the friendliness of the people that are there. And when you think about expanding, you know, if you're seriously looking right now, let's sit down and talk and introduce you to some property owners. So there's kind of a a relationship that that we're keeping one foot in the ever-expanding and evolving business world in New York City, right. you know, through Solution Center and Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce and, you know, all those types of places. But then we're also listening to our property owners that we work with on an ongoing basis, our business community and entrepreneurs, and saying what vacancies are there and what, what are you guys interested in attracting and seeing here and thinking about the retail mix. So what are you interested in seeing? What am I interested in seeing? You know, that, that's, that's one of the breaches of, um, you know, urban planning. But I will tell you what I'm interested in seeing. Um, you know, bakery, yoga shop, um, s- small boutique-type places, um, the bar, the lounge, the coffee shop, you know, um, things that, again, get, when you get up on a Saturday morning after you've been working in the city or you've been working in a large urban center area, crowded downtown, the last thing that you probably want to do is get on the train or get in your car and go someplace else, right? You want to get up and you want to walk to your neighborhood commercial corridor and you want to, you want to sit down, you want to have, you know, pastry, you know, you want to have, you bring, you bring your kids out or bring your partner or whoever and sit down and have brunch right there. In the and keep those consumers local. Keep those consumers local. We are experiencing so much retail leakage. Um, we had a study done in 2009 that says, you know, there's $584 million leaving the neighborhood, you know, and that means jobs that are leaving the neighborhood. That means the reinvestment cycle is leaving the neighborhood. How do you get that money to come back and stay in the neighborhood? Retail leakage, I like that term, but it's a very important issue, particularly for communities like bed It is, it is, particularly when you have, you know, um, unemployment rates as high as they are in central Brooklyn. Um, Now, you know, are we saying that anyone is going to get rich off of, you know, these types of jobs? No, but these are certainly jobs that you can support a family on, you know, and really live and and stable, provide a stable income, you know, for a growing family or even, you know, starting out in tough economic times that we're experiencing now. Um, So how, again, how do we work with the entrepreneurial community, the existing merchant community, the kind of mom and pop to help them evolve? and take advantage of what's happening in the marketplace today to really be a 21st century neighborhood commercial corridor. As well as working with the property owners, because at the end of the day, they're the ones who sort of make the deals with the potential tenants. They are. They are. And we we constantly, 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 uh, property owners, I'm constantly talking to them about, you know, what's happening, who are they looking at, you know, if there's a vacancy and we see a sign go up, you know, first thing we do is we get on the phone and and we call like, hey, you know, um, not that we are anti-broker or anything else, but we would like to work at least in tandem with you, who's your representative, and we get some good responses. Sometimes we don't, but most of the times we do. Well, it sounds like there are exciting things happening in Bed-Stuy and at the Gateway Bid, and I thank you for coming to share some of that with us. Randy, appreciate the opportunity. Thanks so much. Great. Download this program's podcast on iTunes, keywords Brooklyn Independent Television.